Hey, it's JR and Jack, and we're talking spring game. JR here talking with Juck on Bucks. Juck, uh, the spring game, man. What what were your thoughts? Uh, did you watch it on TV? Were you there? What were your thoughts? What'd you think? So I stayed home and watched it on TV. And uh, I, I guess let's talk about the telecast first. I mean, it was really cool to get that insight from Ryan Day on the field. Um, and that one point where he got caught kind of coaching Lincoln, I think a little harder than he wanted to, <laughs> that was a really good moment, man. You, you like to see it. He looked like he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar when they brought the camera around and he realized that, uh, he got caught yelling at him there. Right. That was good. But, uh, all in all, it was really cool. There was a couple things that irritated me and I cannot stand when they do the split screen and plays going on and I can't see what's going on. I'm getting older. My eyes are getting worse. So that really bothers me. But, uh, all in all, it was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I thought the same thing. Uh, Joel, I felt like did a good job interviewing and like giving Ryan a space to be able to coach, but also checking in with him and stuff. I went to the game, so it was kind of funny seeing him down there with Ryan and kind of going back and forth a little bit. There were a few times where he was just kind of off in no man's land where it seemed like he didn't really know what to do. <laughs> it's like he went to <laughs> lunch on the first day of school and he didn't know where to sit. And so, you I know, bet. Everybody else knows each other. What were you going to say? Yeah, I bet. Yeah, sorry. No, yeah, uh, but I'm right there with you. I went home and I watched it because I really wanted to hear what uh, what Urban had to say and kind of what Ryan had to say in the interviews and stuff. And man, I just wish that they would just show him for a minute and then put the play up there and have him do their voiceover with it. I don't need to see Ryan Day. He's watching the play anyway. He's not even looking into the camera. He's just trying to talk and. Uh, yeah, I felt the same way. So, uh, so I know the big thing everybody wants to hear about, let's start with it first. The quarterbacks, uh, we saw a lot from Lincoln, a little bit more than I thought we would air. Yeah. I felt like did a good job. He's speedy, speedy guy out there. Aaron Nolan. I know he's not known for his legs, but man, is he quick. And, uh, we saw Devin one time with the ones, I think will twice with the ones and Devin got his touchdown pass with, uh, some walk-ons and some, uh, second stringers out there, second stringers or third stringers, one of the two. But, uh, what were your thoughts on the quarterbacks overall, Chuck? Well, I guess to start when you, when you bring up, uh, air being quick, that that's true. He's not known for his wheels. And, and I was pretty surprised by that. I was also really happy with kind of the way things have been going for him this spring and everything we've been hearing that he got some good moments. Um, I felt good for him. Uh, as far as, uh, the, the two big dogs, you know, Will was, was who we thought he is. Um, not particularly accurate downfield. Um, but he did lead the offense down the field and, and that was pretty good. It's, it was a pretty solid outing for him. Um, I don't know if we were, if we're supposed to read into anything by, by Devin only getting one series with the ones and also not starting will started the game. Um, but I thought Devin looked good. One of the things that that has always kind of given me pause about Devin is he kind of has this jumpiness to him, like he's just always a little uh, a little too excitable, um, and it just makes me a little uneasy about him. But it looked to me yesterday like he was very calm, and I always felt like if he could ever get a couple games in him, maybe that would go away. Um, but it seems to me like they're trending for they want Will to be the guy. Um, and hey, if that's what it is, I think I think this team can be just fine with Will Howard. Um, as far as Lincoln, you know, he, he's too far away to really talk about Julian. I thought, you know, he looked like a freshman, a true freshman playing in front of 80,000 people for the first three series. Series four, he really settled in. Uh, he made what, one really slick pass over to Kazmierich where he kind of changed his arm slot. It came out like then it was like, yeah, there it is. There's what they're talking about. Um, but all in all. You know, seems like Will's the guy, and it seems like Will's going to be uh, pretty good to me. But he's limited. We know he's limited. Yeah, I feel like Will is not going to lose games for us. And I don't mean to keep bringing back the same person that everybody, you know, harps on us for talking about. But, you know, McCord, when he was in the pocket, you, you held your breath a little bit every time, right? He was kind of happy feet. He didn't he really didn't have the feet to be able to run, but he just kind of kept fading backward, fading backward. And uh, like we saw in that Penn State game, if he didn't get bailed out for the holding on, uh, well, I forget who the DB was, but one of those DBs, didn't get bailed out by that holding then you know Penn State would have had themselves six points and so um you know I don't mean to disparage Kyle McCord more than Ohio State already has I'm sure or at least their fans ha already have but um that that's the part about Will Howard that I, that's his part of the game his like his game that I like 
is his ability to stand in the pocket. And, of course, it's easier. When you're like 6'5 or 6'4, however tall he is, you can stand back there with confidence. And uh, you, you, you really don't have the concerns of somebody that's a little bit smaller, like a Devin Brown or a Kyle McCord. Not that they're small, but they're just smaller than yeah. Will Howard. But, um, but, yeah, no, I agree with you. I think that Will Howard is good enough. Do I think he's more than good enough? Maybe. We'll see. I'd like to see him in some actual game action, let him actually hit. Because uh, when I watched him at Kansas State, uh, did you watch Will Howard at Kansas State very much? Uh, I, I probably saw three games of him when he was at Kansas State. Did you feel the same as me where, like, once he got that first hit, he kind of turned into a little bit more of that playmaker, a little bit more aggressive to where it felt like he was actually kind of taking command of the game a little bit more as much as he could. Obviously, he's not C.J. Stroud or anything like that, but as much as he could as a kind of a competitor. Did you feel that same way? I really did. Honestly, it kind of reminded me of, of – uh, Colin Klein, when he played there a lot, um, just that big quarterback willing to do what what, what it took and uh, just kind of nasty, man. And, and that's the way I think that he is. Um, when you talk about him in the pocket, I, I, you could really see it yesterday and you could definitely see. And that's another knock on Devin. I hate to I hate to you know, keep knocking on him, but, you know, his knock is escaping that pocket early. He did it two times in his first series yesterday. To me, it was way too early. And you could really see the difference in the way Will was kind of navigating that pocket. But, yeah, he's a bruiser. He's a, and then They call him a gamer. I think that's a really good way to describe the way he plays. Um, and, and I think we're going to see uh, – we're going to be really happy with him when we see that kind of fire out of him, particularly, like you say, coming from McCord, who, you know, not a gamer, <laughs> not a fiery guy. Um, that's the type of guy we love uh, leading the team. The big question I have when it comes to Will Howard is, you know, there will be a time uh, in a championship run where it's going to come down to the quarterback really stepping up and winning a game late. You know, is he going to be able to do that when it comes down to that time? Because there will, will probably be a time in this run where, where we need him to win a game. And, uh, you know, that's the pause I have about him. Other than that, I think he can be a great leader of a team, a great manager of an offense. And, uh, you know, this is what we got. So, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to find anybody in the portal. It's, uh, yeah. you know, you're not going to find uh, Dylan Gabriel out there <laughs> going to the portal or anything like that. I guess you could maybe. We'll see if Dante Moore has just really had a fantastic spring, but I don't think that's going right. to happen. So, uh, but yeah, no, man, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'll tell you at the end of the day, um, you know, as much as we've, we've harped on Devin a little bit here, I, I don't know if there's anybody I'm rooting for on this team to have a, a successful football career more than Devin. I mean, you saw some of the tweets out there about like him on the sideline and like, man, every time he talks about, Will, this guy has had two guys in front of him now on the depth chart. It seems like after Will Howard has started the spring game now, well, how has he reacted both times? He's been a great teammate. Great team at both times. He's teaching Will Howard stuff about Ohio State tradition out there. He was always good to Kyle McCord, always trying to help, just doing whatever he can to help the team win. And so for me, it's like I'm not saying I want him to start this year, but there's a piece of me that gets a little bit, you know, as I get older in age, I get a little bit softer, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of what happens to us. But, yep. um, you know, I, I, I look at him and I'm like, I just want this kid to succeed uh, in whatever he's doing because he really does seem like a great kid. He's just a great teammate. I'm so with you. I'm so with you. I think he is the perfect Buckeye. I mean, yeah. and you talk about about him with McCord. When McCord threw that touchdown to win the Notre Dame game, he was the first one to run out and congratulate him. Uh, you know, the attitude he's had about the setbacks in his career um, on the sideline at Missouri, just firing everybody up. I mean, every He's just had such bad luck. And uh, it almost seemed like after the Missouri thing with the, the second injury, everybody just kind of bailed on him. He comes into this season, the attitude is just the same. He's fiery. He's supportive. He's just awesome. And how could you how could you not root for the guy? I doubt some of his, you know, I doubt that he's ever going to be that guy on that kind of level. But I'll tell you what, Jr. That kid's high school film is, is probably top ten I've ever seen out of a quarterback. It's amazing. I think it's in there somewhere. Will he ever unleash it for the Buckeyes? I don't really think so. Uh, I hope he does at his next stop if he leaves, but I don't think it's going to happen here. I hope it does, but I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. We'll see uh, if it does. The odds don't look like they're in his favor right now, but uh, 
but I like the description fiery with uh, burn the boats and the fiery there. That's a, that's a good connection there. <laughs> uh, all right, Jack, I want to ask you about another guy. This guy's not getting talked about even by the, like the 24 sevens and Buckeye huddle, all those places I listen to. Cause like you said on your podcast one time, like everybody goes and listens to those guys and they come and listen to <laughs> the smaller <laughs> accounts, which is great. I fully support it too. But uh, one person I've not heard a lot about is Jaden Ballard. I know this is somebody that people were talking about with like transfer portal rumors, but man, he was running with the ones. I don't know if you saw that he was out there with the ones he was with Will Howard and uh, he was on don't tackle me team. So, you know, you feel pretty good when you're on don't tackle me team, but what were your thoughts on Jaden Ballard? Maybe just him as a whole. Do you think he's going to hit the portal? Do you think he's got a spot on this team? What are your thoughts? Jaden Ballard. So I'm from Northeast Ohio. He's from Maslin. I, I followed his career a lot in high school when he first got to Ohio state, incredibly talented guy. We all know that. Um, why it hasn't clicked for him and why he hasn't been able to, to do the best with his opportunities has been a mystery to me. Um, but I'll tell you what, when we talk about him in the portal, no, I don't think so at all. I think this guy loves Ohio State and he loves being a teammate with those guys on that team. Um, you know, the social media team's been doing some great videos and uh, one of the ones that they did, they were talking about, you know, who are who the five you'd pick on a basketball team? Everybody picked Jaden Ballard, and it just it's he's a team guy. They love him and he loves it there. Um, now that he's getting a little bit of run here, could we see it click for him finally? I don't know what's holding him back, but his attitude's been great. And uh I, I think he's got the tools to get it done. Will we see a whole lot out of him? I mean, I don't know, but but I think if he does get on the field in that capacity, we could see some production for sure. We saw him on that end around. He's he's fast, he's smooth. We could see it, Jr. We really could. I I don't know if anybody else is thinking this, but I I can just like envision now like uh, Jaden Ballard touchdown in the playoffs and the semifinals or something like that, and end a round where he takes it I don't know 40, 50 yards or something like that, and everybody it's just like that moment of his career where it's like this is what we've been waiting for. We thought it might be a deep pass or something like that, but it's just an end around where he just blazed by everybody. Uh, I want to see something like that so bad because kind of like Devin Brown, I'm just rooting for this kid so hard because because uh, he really does seem like a great teammate and just just one of those guys that you can oh, yeah. find yourself rooting for. So uh, before we move to the defense, running backs, O-line, I know O-line, I felt like looked a little bit better than I anticipated. Uh, I don't know how much there is to say about Trevion and Quinshawn. Very good. <laughs> Sam Williams yeah. Dixon, fast. James People, physical. Uh, you have any thoughts on uh, those guys? Uh, what stood out to me most was James Peoples. He's the truth. You know, we've, we've heard it all spring. I've, I've been waiting just to see him move, just to see him out there. He, he is the truth. He's the next man up. He's he's going to be a dude for sure. Um, offensive line, I found it pretty telling that uh, heading into spring, they, they asked Ryan Day how he feels about the offensive line, and he said that he feels it's championship caliber. Asked him again coming out, and those weren't exactly his words. Um, I think it's pretty evident that uh, – Something, they're not shirt up with Luke. It looked like Luke was going to be the guy at right guard, Luke Montgomery. And uh, then yesterday they come out with Carson Hinsman starting at right guard. Um, I, I think that they, they are on a heavy portal watch on that for that right side. And they ultimately want to move uh, Fryer to right guard and, and get him a right tackle in the portal. So that, that's what I think is happening there. But like you, it looked better. And I think that we are seeing Chip Kelly's effect on the offense right there. And that's to me is of all the massive moves we had in the off season, Chip Kelly is number one. It's going to be the one that's going to be most, uh, most transparent to us uh, on the team as a whole. And uh, we could see it yesterday in that run scheme. It, it looked smooth despite the fact that they're going against the best defensive front in football, for my opinion. So I was really excited to see that. That's just the segue I was going to have next is that this offensive line, they, they looked a little bit better and good for them because they were going against one of the best defensive fronts, if not the best defensive front. I would argue this is the deepest defensive line in college Absolutely. football this year. I mean, it seems like they are five or six, possibly even seven deep on the mm -hmm. defensive ends. Mitchell Melton, oh my gosh, Mitchell that Melton. guy, uh, it just fantastic. Uh, Edric Houston. Looked fantastic. Uh, it felt like they were rota rotating those defensive tackles in there. It was, you know, Tyleek. It was Hamilton. It was Moore. It was all, you know, I mean, any list of number of guys that you want to talk about. Taiwan Malone was in there making plays at one point. I mean, if if we win a national championship, I really do feel like, and we'll get to the secondary in a minute, but I really do feel like it's going to be on the back of this defensive line. What are your thoughts, Jeff? It's crazy. And, and you know, we look back at uh, 
all, all the times we've struggled in the playoffs or in the championship game against some behemoth SEC teams, um, the, the difference between their team and ours wasn't team speed. It was depth at the defensive line. They had a second wave of, of big nasties, okay? And we couldn't compete with that second wave of big nasties coming in fresh the entire game, and they'd grind us out. Um, we got the second wave of big nasties. We talk about Mitchell, Mitchell Melton, Caden McDonald in there, just stuffing up the middle. Hero Canoe had a big play. Jason Moore, uh, just dudes after dudes after dudes now. And uh, we haven't seen a Buckeye team this deep up front, in, in, uh, probably in my life, to be quite honest. It is th These guys could start everywhere. That whole second wave, they could start everywhere. And, and they're coming in off the bench at Ohio State. It's unbelievable. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And uh, I, I couldn't be more excited, you know, to have the strength of our team be the defensive line and the secondary, which we'll get to in a minute. What, what more could you ask for? I mean, it's amazing. Let's talk about the secondary. I mean, yeah. Igmanosin, dude, dude, his hands eat, but man, is he confident? <laughs> yes, um, he I, I I don't know. You think uh, there could have been a few flags of the end zone on a couple of those fade routes? Perhaps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe a few. But uh, no, I mean, Igmanosin, man, he he brings another level to this defense. I I said it on a live stream uh, for a spring recap, spring game recap. Man, he he just. He brings another level to this defense with his intensity, with his attitude. Uh, I had somebody tell me he might be better than Denzel Burke. I don't know if I'd go that far, but he definitely makes an impact on this team with the kind of player he is and uh, just this, the fire that he plays with. Because uh, when he lines up against those wide receivers, you know he's looking them in the eye and he's thinking in his mind, I'm better than you and I'm going to show it. Absolutely. Um, your thoughts on just the secondary overall, Chuck? Yeah, so I love I love Ingvidos and I love his nastiness. And we look talk about a younger guy, Jermaine Matthews, got the same kind of attitude. Yes. Um, these are dudes that are just bringing it and talking trash, and it's it's just kind of reminds me of some of the nasty secondaries like uh, Oh One Miami, just you know, dudes who could bring it and and would just talk talk their way all the way through it. Um, and this secondary is kind of deep like that too. It's uh, it's borderline scary. These guys are going against this wide receiver core and they're holding their own yesterday. We heard Joel Klatt say it from the field. You know, they looked like it to us on TV, probably looked like it to you. You were there, but th there was no separation anywhere. And we're talking about a Mecca, JJ Carnell. They couldn't separate. Th these dudes are just insane. They're insanely good. And another unit that's incredibly deep. It, what Tim Walton has done back there is, is been just beautiful. And then we talk about the guys coming in with Devin Sanchez and Naeem Offord. I mean, we got this thing cooking. It is cooking and it is built to last. Once they kick in the door, and I believe they're going to this year, uh, this thing is, is it looks like peak Alabama right now. It really does. That's secondary. It looks like peak Alabama. It's insane. And I have to believe that Caleb Downs came in there and he made the room only better with his attitude and what he brought as well, right? I mean, there's a – like. It's, it's astounding to me that the secondary was so good that the first name we bring up out of the spring game is Igbenosin. We're not bringing up Caleb Downs. We're not right. bringing up you know, Denzel Burke. We're bringing up Igbenosin, Jermaine Matthews, Calvin Simpson Hunt, uh, you, uh, who's uh, Aaron Scott Jr. He had like six tackles on the day, the most He's second good. most tackles, I think, on the day, You know, which those were real tackles, not the two-hand touch that we saw, which <laughs> is fine. I get why they do it, but I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I I mean, neither the Twitter just, they are boy. What what? Neither the Twitter, but we got roasted <laughs> for that one pretty hard today. <laughs> I posted after the spring game. I was like, I went to the spring game. I didn't have any overreactions. I didn't have any social media feuds. And I didn't have any, uh, oh, what's the other thing I said? Uh, any concerns or anything like that. <laughs> and then I got on Twitter and I was like, yeah, I, I'm glad I stayed off for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was brutal. And some of it wasn't even our people. It was, uh, it was the Michigan fans going after them. And, oh, oh yeah. man, it was, it was wild. So I don't even, I don't even bother responding to most of them anymore. Cause they're just looking for, they were just looking for attention. Depends it's, what it's kind fine. of mood I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> hey, I saw you on that, uh, that, uh, Ohio state Michigan podcast, man, you were in a mood to really go after them that day. I loved it. You know, sometimes they just, they just trigger me in the right moment and it's, it just comes out. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Uh, all right. I guess our last one to talk about is the linebackers. Um, the, I was a little concerned with how Travion and Quinshawn, how many holes they had to run through and man, Quinshawn, when he hits those holes, man, he's one wow. cut hit 
go. Uh, and that's really hard to stop. So, uh, but I was a little concerned. CJ Hicks, he, he's going to be really good, but he still needs to learn a little bit more. Uh, I think the run defense will get a little bit better once Lathan Ransom is back. I think he's a big piece of that. Somebody that Jim Knowles is really going to be leaning on this year. Uh, Cody Simon was okay, but at the end of the day, uh, I, I worry a little bit about the linebackers. Your thoughts, Chuck? Well, you know, CJ Hicks, obviously we know he's, a, he's a, an, an amazing talent. He's got a great attitude. Um, hasn't seen the field much because he finds himself in the wrong places too much. And I think we saw a little bit of that yesterday, but it is kind of hard to, for me to judge in this format when they're not tackling to, to get a real accurate gauge on that. Um, I think everything we've heard James Laurinaitis say about CJ Hicks is that he's coming along nicely. Obviously we know on any kind of blitz or pressure, he's going to be amazing. Um, but you know, is he going to ultimately be that guy? Is Sonny going to take that from him? I don't know. There's a whole lot of questions still at the linebacker spot. And I got to say, if, if there's uh, one spot on the team that, that I, that I know is in good hands, it's that place right there. James Laurinaitis is, is one of the more impressive guys I've ever heard talk. Every time I hear this guy talk, it's just like, wow. I mean, this is just, this guy owns every room he's in. Uh, he loves Ohio State more than any alum I've ever heard. And uh, I just have faith that he's got this, the tools there to work with, that everything's going to be just fine. I mean, I just feel at ease about it. You know, whether it's ultimately CJ Hicks, whether it's Sonny, whether it's Gabe Powers or Arvell Reese, I know that one of those dudes is going to be ready to stand next to Cody and get it done. I just, I just feel faith in that. I do too. That's the thing that gives me the, you know, the, the, the piece about it all is like, I know James Laurinaitis is there. I know it's not Jim Knowles trying to be both the DC and the linebacker coach, which I'm not knocking Jim Knowles at all. I just think that he's much, much better when he's only doing defensive coordinator stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that gives him the time to really focus in on what he's doing. I think it's so funny how much Ryan Day and Chip Kelly, when they're asked about what are the struggles of the offense, they both say Jim Knowles <laughs> <It's just laughs> of what he's doing with the, with the guys and everything. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I'm right there with you. I think that James Laurinaitis is really going to have these guys going. Uh, Sonny Styles with the twos. Uh, what would you make of that there, Jack? Honestly, I thought when we first when we first heard that he was officially moving into the linebacker room that uh, definitely by the spring game, but I thought it wouldn't be but two weeks into spring practice before he was going to be the one. Um, Same. And, and I just – I'm kind of surprised that he's not. Now – I don't know if that means he's not coming along faster or CJ's just stepping it up. My, my attitude this season, JR, is positivity. So I believe it's CJ just stepping it up. Um, and and Sonny being a being a two, I mean, that's great, right? Like any team in the country would love to have that guy on their bench coming off the bench fresh. Right. Um, he's amazing. He's my favorite young player of, of the younger guys. I guess he's not so young anymore, but he was one of my favorite recruits of all time, probably in my top five. I, I just am absolutely enamored with this dude, and uh, I want to see him on the field. So it, w what capacity that's in, I don't know, but I still think we're going to see plenty of Sonny Styles, and I think he's going to make some amazing plays. The first tackle I ever saw Sonny Styles make, uh, the reaction of the running back was just a little bit different. And I, I just think he's a different type of cat. And I cannot wait till we see him really break out in the role I think he's meant to play. And that is at linebacker. It's going to be something awesome to watch. I think so, too. I think so, too. I think Sonny just needs a little bit more time. And, you know, changing positions like that, it's its not the easiest thing in the world. And, yeah. um, you know, I don't mean to make this sound like it's middle school or anything like that, but his body is changing so fast and everything True. as well. I mean, the guy started at safety last year, you know, after uh, Lathan went down and uh, then he's coming in. Now he's going to linebacker. Like, there's a whole lot to learn. I think it's more just a testament to him how close he can be as the starter for both safety and linebacker you Absolutely. Know, to, to be there for that. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it ends up, but, uh, Jack, thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, you want to tell people where they can find you at? Yeah. Hit me up at Jack on bucks on Twitter or, uh, my YouTube page, Jack on bucks. Um, we do about five shows a week. JR. Thanks so much for having me, man. When I heard that music come on in the beginning, I, I just got so amped. I love the show. Thanks, man. Yeah, man, for sure. Glad to have you here. Uh, if you want to check out Juck's stuff, go into the description. You can find his link there. And you can also find the link to my Twitter and my show outside of the Voice of College Football as well. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great one.